In today's society, there seems to be a general misconception that teachers, especially faculty in higher education, basically teach a couple hours a day, a few days a week, and then grade papers. In reality, the story is much different. The role taken on by faculty involves many other areas of service to their college or university and to the broader community. Areas such as research, community service, and the advancement of human knowledge. This documentary explores the work that faculty do and how their role as faculty relates to the role their respective institution plays in teaching, research, and service to the communities they serve. The areas explored cut below the surface to reveal what happens outside the classroom, how faculty contribute to student advisement, governance, administration, research, and community service. I'm Eleni Pino. I am an associate professor of psychology in the Department of Human Behavior, Justice and Diversity and the Psychology Program. My name is Ephraim Nikwe and I'm in the Communicating Arts Department. I'm an assistant professor of communication and distance learning. My name is Mary Churchill and I'm an assistant professor in the teacher education program at UW-Superior. My name is Michelle Arnhold Davies. I teach biology within the Department of Natural Sciences. So a typical teaching day usually starts before I even get out of bed. For better or worse, I have uh, email access on my phone. Students often email me at all hours of the night and expect uh, responses. I usually try to check email and respond to them. Um, all of my teaching is really kind of chunked into the late morning and afternoon. So I teach from 10 to 11 and 11 to 12 and I have meetings from 12 to 1 and then I teach from 1 to 2. So I need to get everything ready. Um, to go for the entire day in that in that morning. My typical teaching day starts with going online, first of all, to check on my online students. I usually have to log in, see where my students are, how their discussions are going, uh, which is always a, a priority because it just helps me to keep track of what is going on in the classroom online. The other thing is preparing for my classes on, on the ground, my face-to-face -face class. And that includes, of course, looking at the chapters that we need to review for the day. I also do additional research. It is important that you are always abreast with what is going on. My typical teaching day is actually pretty hard to describe because I don't know if there is necessarily a typical teaching day. So I usually get to work half an hour to maybe an hour before my first class so that I can review my notes for the day. So I teach from 9 till noon and then from 2 to 3. So I usually go through and I teach those three classes in a row, which is always kind of terrifying because I have, you know, 10 minutes lead time between each class. I usually have to run in between to my office to grab my notes, kind of try to recenter myself, check the syllabus to make sure I'm on the right day and everything. So that's mostly what I do on a teaching day. I run around like crazy. The way I prepare for my classes is actually different depending on the class that I'm teaching. Class prep is very time consuming and requires me to really think about what is it important for my students to learn. The thing about teaching a science, and psychology is a science, I can never teach the same class twice because the field is always changing and moving and I want to make sure that I'm giving my students the best information possible. If I had class today, I will be really honest, I have everything already prepared last week. I never leave this building, this institution, until I have my classes all ready to go for the next day. I have a folder that has everything that I might need so that as soon as I walk in that classroom, I'm ready to teach. It takes a lot of prep to get there. It's not something that I just do in an hour. It's something that I typically work on the semester before. So in addition to teaching lectures in science classes, we also have laboratories where we do hands-on activities, where we perform scientific experiments, we may be dissecting animals. That's a whole different thing to prepare for. In a small school with a limited budget, faculty do everything. So if I need to order animals to do a lab the following week, I need to make sure I have everything ordered. If we need certain supplies, I need to have those ordered. And that part of my teaching day is much more hands-on, much more technical, much more problem solving, and really thinking ahead week to week what we're going to be um, doing in the lab every day. And grading papers is not just about Oh yeah, this is good, let's move on. As an instructor, it is really important that I give students feedback and to give them constructive feedback. 
because I want them to know what they are doing right, what they need to improve, what are things that they need to work on, what are some additional research that they need to do for that particular assignment. And this calls for a lot of work, but it's worth it because you want to make sure that students are learning. I had a goal this year that I was setting aside four hours on Tuesdays and four hours on Fridays to do my grading, and that lasted a week. Um, so now I just wait and I do my grading, typically after class hours, after office hours, after university hours, business hours, um, because that's when, it's, that's when I have the most time available to me. I think that grading is incredibly important for students. It gives them feedback that will help them be successful. Grading takes a lot of time. It depends on the assignment for me. If you have a class of about 20 students and I have an assignment that takes 20 to 25 minutes to grade, that's over eight hours of grading just for that one class. It is a significant part of, of my life, grading. There's no point for me to grade something and not provide a lot of feedback because then my student isn't learning anything. So when I grade, I'm not just grading so that they'll improve in my class, I'm grading so that they'll do better in other classes. And the whole point of education is to make students better thinkers, better writers, better citizens. There are several components of teacher education at UWS. First we have the core classes or the foundational classes, the teaching classes. Then we get the licensing requirements. We have students are responsible for taking several standardized tests. So it's like a big jigsaw puzzle that has to be put together and it's time consuming. Last semester, for example, I kept track that I saw over 75 students just during advising season to help them with their course selection for the next semester. I think there's a general misunderstanding that advisement of students is really just me telling them these are the classes you need to take to graduate. But I think of advisement really as formalized and school sanctioned mentoring. In addition to the um, formal advisement, I do a lot of informal advisement as well. I also have students who are applying for jobs or um, students who have graduated who are applying for medical schools or professional schools and they need a letter of recommendation or they need a reference. Those take a lot of time actually because I I take them very seriously. This is something that's going to help a student get to where they want to be. Right now I have about 31 advices and my advices are not only students who are coming to campus here. There are students who are online who are my advices and many of these students are full-time workers. So sometimes you go home and then you get a call or sometimes over the weekend to talk to students about, about issues that they are facing. My colleagues always say, it looks like this student was in your office for so long. I said, yeah, we had to deal with some crisis. We had to deal with certain things that they are dealing with that we needed to work on. The Educator Preparation Program, the Teacher Education Advisory Committee, and the Undergraduate Academic Affairs Council. Those are my three primary university committees that I'm involved with. But the majority of the work doesn't take place during the meetings themselves. The majority of the work takes place before the meetings and after meetings. To prepare for a, a teacher education meeting, for example, it requires me meeting with our field experience coordinator. I need to meet with our data specialist. I need to meet with some of our liaisons to make sure that we have everything in place so that the meeting is productive and a good use of the time for the participants. I'm currently the chair for the Undergraduate Academic Affairs Council, which is a council that oversees all issues of undergraduate academics. We oversee the curriculum to make sure that the integrity of the academic product that we are delivering is very high. That's essentially what that committee does, and I think that the, the curriculum in the school is much stronger for it. So I'm grateful to be on that committee because I love seeing what happens academically on this campus. It is very time consuming, but it also allows me to feel like I'm making a difference. I'm currently a member of the Faculty Senate. I'm also a coordinator in the, what we call the High Impact Practices. You look at committee work and say, well, I have uh, maybe three hours of committee meetings every week. The time that you spend is almost double of that because, you know, if it is three hours you're spending over over six hours totally. One committee that I served on was 
um, an assessment team that looked at how we as a university could assess how our students are learning. The committee lasted for over four years, uh, meeting over the summer, going to different conferences on um, assessment tools and assessment practices. So it wasn't just sitting in, in a meeting for an hour every other week and, and uh, twiddling our thumbs. It was a lot of work. In terms of my research, there are so many things that I'm doing. I just went through a chapter that I'm working on with some of my colleagues right now on internationalizing a curriculum. I co-edited a book on collaborative communication processes and decision making in organizations. My area of research is organizations. I, I look at communication processes in organizations, so it's a wide range of research. Uh, I really like to work with students. I've worked with some students who have presented at conferences. Uh, I've worked with a lot of students who are coming up with new ideas on research topics. This is really important because it is an opportunity to look at teaching in different ways. I have worked with um, a number of students doing research projects. The research is always related to my scholarships. The science that I do is, is molecular biology, and so we um, look at how different hormones change in response to different, uh, different stimuli. Doing research with students is a really important teaching experience. It's a really unique opportunity to work one-on-one -on -one with students um, and to really teach them the scientific method. I research spoken word recognition, so when you hear me talking, how are you able to understand what I'm saying? In particular, I look at the regularities or likelihood that sounds will occur within a word. So if you've ever spent a couple of minutes on the phone fighting with an automated service, trying to get them to understand that you want customer service, not something else. Although, in general, I tend to think about my research more as a pursuit in and of itself. You know, at the end of the day, yes, my research may be helpful to the industry, but it, I'm much more concerned with answering the question of how do we understand speech, because I think that's a phenomenally interesting question. I used to have the ability to do some outreach work. I um, worked on some technology integration workshops. I also did some curriculum work for animal allies. They go into classrooms and, and put on presentations and have some little academic sessions with students. I enjoyed doing that and I think that it made an, an impact. See, I feel it is my uh, part of my responsibility and it's part of an outreach kind of thing to make sure that I'm engaged with, with the community. Uh, and I do this in different ways. Um, currently, I'm part of the diversity leadership group for Northern Lights Elementary School. And it's really been rewarding to, to be part of that diversity leadership group. I also engage in the community in different ways. Uh, I'm a rolling reader, uh, which means I take some time during the week and then go to the elementary school and read to a class. So one of the outreach activities that I use in my human anatomy and physiology class is an academic service learning project. For that project, I have my students participate in something called Science Night. Science Night is an evening that a UWS student organization puts on. The student organization is called Students of Science. And so I have offered the work of my class to the Students of Science to help uh, Science Night be successful. Science Night brings in Oh, you know, a couple thousand people usually, um, and it's a really good opportunity for us to interact with the community, to show them a little bit um, about what we're doing, uh, show them that science can be fun. It's not necessarily intimidating. At UW Superior, teaching is a holistic idea. It's not just what happens in the classroom. It happens in advisement. It happens in student orgs. It happens, you know, when, with service learning, with undergraduate research. And so, because teaching is this holistic thing, just seeing these students become the people that you knew they could is really rewarding. I always think of my students as in a state of becoming. They're on their way somewhere and I feel really grateful for getting to be a part of that for them. And um, you know, in some ways, my best teaching moment is selfish because I get a lot of joy out of seeing them develop. And it, I'm grateful that for four years I get to be a part of their lives.
It's just been great to be part of the Communicating Arts Department and to see the different programs that we have there. I think it's just been a great opportunity for me to be able to do that in, in diverse ways and to, to work with people to achieve their goal of understanding the world around them and, and, and getting to know themselves much, much better. I think the one thing I have to say about this job is that it's not a job. It becomes a lifestyle. Checking email, getting correspondence from colleagues and from students on the weekends. I advise, I meet, I problem solve, I try to become creative, I bring my job home. I have a colleague and sometimes we'll joke, I'll go up to her and I'll say, did you know I also teach? And we laugh because sometimes that just gets so lost with everything else that's and yet, when I see those students and they come into my office and I talk to them, I remember why I'm here and how much I love working with them. Most of what I do in my teaching and my research is related to human health and how the body works. So my hope is that uh, in the work that I do, students are also learning how to think and how to ask questions, how to analyze information, um, and whether they become scientists or not, that they become informed citizens, they become engaged citizens, that they become active members of their community, and um, think about what they do and how it impacts uh, their lives and the lives of others.